Welcome to the first ever Math Major example video. My name is Justin, and for those of you who don't know, I was one of the interns on the Michael Penn YouTube channel, and I'm now working in a full-time position to manage both channels. Today we're going to be going over the basic principles of mathematical induction, as well as going over some examples. This video is meant to follow the second lecture in the full number theory course we're doing on the channel, so if you haven't watched that, please check it out. So to get started, let's go over an outline of how an inductive proof goes. With an inductive proof, we will usually begin with a proposition that holds for all n in the natural numbers. So when we begin our proof, we'll start by proving a base case. This will be the first case. And usually this is a very simple calculation that can be easily verified that we will then use later. So after that, we're going to write out an induction hypothesis that goes something like, suppose for some k greater than or equal to 1, the statement p of k is true. From here, we're going to use the base case and or the induction hypothesis to prove an induction step, which is to show that p of k implies p of k plus 1. And this is usually done by method of direct proof. And combining these two pieces is sufficient for a proof of all cases. Now that we have that basic outline out of the way, let's get into an example. Okay, for our first example, we'll be proving this equality right here where we have this sum of the natural numbers over these factorials equals 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So to start with, we're going to prove our base case. And the base case in this is going to be very simply just when n equals to 1. So that's going to give us 1 over 1 plus 1 factorial, which is just 1 half, equals to 1 minus 1 over Again, 1 plus 1 factorial, and we can see that 1 minus 1 half is indeed going to equal 1 half. So that proves our base case. From here, we're going to write out our induction hypothesis. And for that, we're going to assume that this is true um, for all k in the natural numbers. For the purpose of this video, every time I say the natural numbers, I mean 1 to infinity. We're not including 0. So for all k in the natural numbers, we have 1 over 2 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial all the way up to k over k plus 1 factorial equals 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. So that's our induction hypothesis. Now we're going to consider the k plus first case. And we're going to use our induction hypothesis to prove this case. So it's going to be very similar to what we just wrote. We're going to have 1 half plus 2 over 3 all the way up to k over k plus 1 factorial. But we add a k plus first term here at the end. So we'll have k plus 1 over k plus 2 factorial. And our goal here is to manipulate this to get what we want on the right hand side. So if we plug in k plus 1 to that right hand side, we would have 1 minus 1 over k plus 2 factorial. But we can see that on our left hand side here, a lot of the work's already been done for us. This is exactly equal to 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 factorial, as we wrote here in our induction hypothesis. So that means we can rewrite this as 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 factorial plus k plus 1 over k plus 2 factorial. Now we're almost done here. All we have to do is combine our terms and see if we get what we want. So here we're going to multiply by k plus 2 over k plus 2. So we'll have 1 minus k plus 2 over k plus 2 factorial. And that gives us our common denominator of k plus 2 factorial, which allows us to combine these terms here. And we can see that because of that minus sign, we're going to get exactly what we want. So those k's are going to cancel out, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So that'll leave us with 1 minus 1 over k plus 2 factorial, which is exactly what you would get if you plugged in k plus 1 into the right-hand side of our induction hypothesis. So that completes our proof. 
For our next example, we'll be proving this result for the Fibonacci numbers. So first, let's quickly recall what the Fibonacci numbers are. The Fibonacci numbers are very simply a series where each consecutive term is just the sum of the previous two terms. And for that definition to work, we need to define our first two terms. And the first two numbers are 0 and 1. So in general, for all n in the natural numbers, once again, not including 0, we have f2 equals f1 plus f0. There are actually a lot of results with these numbers, and I believe that Michael did an example with the Fibonacci numbers in the in the second course video, so you can go check that out if you're interested in more problems like this. So to begin with this problem, we're going to do our base case. So our base case is going to be the sum of the first two Fibonacci numbers. So we have f0 plus f1 equals f3 minus 1. And plugging in our definitions for f0 and f1 into this, we get 0 plus 1 equals, and f3 is going to be sum of the previous two. So we need to calculate an f2, but we can see that that's just going to also be 1. So f3 is just going to be 2. So we have 0 plus 1 equals 2 minus 1, and obviously 1 is equal to 1, so that checks our base case. So now we're going to write out our induction hypothesis. And just like before, for that, we're going to assume that this holds uh, for all k in the natural numbers. So for all k in the natural numbers, we have f of 1 plus f of 2 all the way up to f of k equals f of k plus 2 minus 1. Next, we're going to consider the k plus first case and then prove it with our induction hypothesis. So for our k plus first case here, we're gonna have the sum of the Fibonacci numbers once again with one extra term. So f of one up to f of k, and then add at the end there f of k plus one. And we want to show that that's equal to f of k plus three minus one. Now, just as before, we can make a substitution using our induction hypothesis. So we can plug in f of k plus 2 in for our first k terms here. And in doing so, we're going to get f of k plus 2 minus 1 plus f of k plus 1. Now, if we recall from our definition of the Fibonacci numbers, the sum of f of k plus 2 and f of k plus 1 is just going to be f of k plus 3 by definition. So that's going to equal f of k plus 3 minus 1, which is exactly what we wanted to prove to finish this off. All right, so for our third example, we will be proving a simple result using binomial coefficients. Uh, I've included the definition here. So to start, let's prove our base case. And that's going to be for n equal to 2 and k equal to 1. As I said, we're not including 0 in the natural numbers. Um, so let's see what we get for that. We'll have 2 choose 1, which equals 2 factorial over 1 factorial times 2 minus 1 factorial. And we can see that that's just going to be 2 over 1, which is equal to 2, which is obviously even. So that checks our base case. Next, we are going to write out our induction hypothesis. So we're going to assume that for all k in the natural numbers, well, I guess we've already used k, so let's say for all m in the natural numbers, we have that the following statement is true, and that's going to be that m choose k is even. Or to write that out, we'll have that m factorial over k factorial times m minus k factorial equals 2 times L, with L being some natural number. Now, as we have been doing, we're going to consider the next case. So let's consider the next case. And for that, we're going to be considering the M plus 2 case. And that's because M is even. So the next case is going to be M plus 2 instead of M plus 1. So let's write that out. We will have M plus 2 choose K. We can plug that in to our formula. And we will have M plus 2 factorial 
over k factorial times m plus 2 minus k factorial. And we're going to want to arrange this in such a way that we can express the top and the bottom of this fraction as 2 times a number to prove that both are going to be even, which will prove that the whole fraction is even. So we can do that fairly easily. So let's start by expanding these factorials out a little bit so we can make a substitution using our induction hypothesis. So to do that, we're going to write this as m plus 2 times m plus 1 times m factorial on top. And that'll give us the m factorial for the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to write it as k factorial times m plus 2 minus k times m plus 1 minus k times m minus k factorial. And from there, we can make a substitution using our induction hypothesis with those terms on the right there. Um, so we will have here, I guess I should write over here that we're using the induction hypothesis. So I H for these terms here. So that's going to give us a 2L on the top. And we'll have 2L times m plus 2 times m plus 1. We can see that complete, completes uh, our proof for the top being an even number because we have it as 2 times stuff. Now for the bottom, we're going to use the definition of an odd number, which is just that you can write it 2 times a natural number plus 1. So we're going to make a substitution for k that is 2j plus 1 so that we can hopefully get a 2 out front. So let's go ahead and write that. We'll have 2j plus 1 factorial times m plus 2 minus 2j plus 1 times m plus 1 minus 2j plus 1. And we can see where we're going to get our 2 here. It's going to be on that far right term because those 1s are going to cancel out. And that'll leave us with m minus 2j. And as we know, that And as we know, m is even and 2j is also even. So that means we can write it as 2 times some natural number. So we're going to rewrite this far right term as 2 times some natural number. Uh, we're kind of running out of variables here. So let's just say h. So that's going to give us 2l times m plus 2 times m plus 1. And we're going to write that far right term as 2 times h. So then we'll have 2h times 2j plus 1 factorial times m minus 2j plus 1. And that's enough to prove that this is even, which completes our proof. For our fourth and final example, we will be proving this fact about dividing a plane into many regions using lines. So for this, we will have our base case once again. And in this case, the base case is going to be when n is equal to 1. And that will give us 1 half times 1 squared plus 1 plus 2. And that's going to be equal to 4 over 2, which equals 2. And obviously, if you take a plane and draw an infinitely long line, it will be divided into two regions. So that proves our base case. So next, we'll write our induction hypothesis. I'm not going to rewrite the conditions for these lines here. They are written above for you. But we're going to say that k lines separate the plane into 1 half times k squared plus k plus 2 regions. Next, as always, we are going to consider the next case. So consider the k plus first case. In order to write out mathematically what the k plus first case is, we first need to note that each time we draw an additional line in our plane, we're going to intersect all of the previous lines that have been drawn. This is due to the fact that no two lines are parallel. And because of this, any two lines that are not parallel and are infinitely long will eventually intersect. So each new line will intersect all previous lines, and then in doing so, divide all of the regions that we already have into new regions, specifically two new regions.
This means we can write out our k plus first case in the following way. So we have k squared plus k plus 2 over 2, and then plus k plus 1. So we want a common denominator, so we'll multiply that right term by 2 over 2, which will give us k squared plus k plus 2 plus 2 times k plus 1 all over 2. And from here, we're going to rearrange it slightly and factor some stuff out so that we can get what we want. So we'll have, uh, let's just take the top down here. We will have k squared plus 2k plus 1. And then we'll group that together. And then we'll have plus k plus 1. And then have a plus 2 out at the end there. And that gives us all we need to finish it off. So we have k plus 1 squared plus k plus 1 plus 2 all over 2, which is exactly what we want because if we plug in a k plus 1 into our induction hypothesis, that is exactly what we get. So that completes this proof. And that's a good place to stop.